Yeah. So the pre so thank you so much, Isabella, and, and uh, the presentation that I'm given I've, I've given a few times. Um, uh, there's a there's kind of a part one that that talks about um, the 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 problem of physical physical inactivity, and it talks about the benefits of exercise. <clears throat> and I think I think it's pretty well publicized the benefits of exercise, and the fact that we have so many people that have that have you know, logged on to this presentation tonight, kind of support that. You know, you, you heard that it's important. Your physician may have told you that it's important um, and, uh, or maybe you're just reluctant to do it. And uh, so this portion of the, the presentation, this presentation actually is, is some guidelines on, on what to do, how to get started and, um, and how to do it safely and effectively. And that's gonna be a key word. Right, not just moving, but moving effectively, and uh, we're going to give you some um, some some tips and some guidelines. All right, so let's get started. All right, and uh, a slide here just to kind of button up where we've been. All right, so we all know exercise is good for us. I'm making that assumption. Um, that's the first thirty slides of this presentation uh, when, when I do the whole thing. And you can see here, just listed a, a smattering of, of things that, that uh, being physically active is good for and the benefits of it. We all know that there's physical benefits, whether it be weight management or whether it be activities of daily living or, or for, for athletes, you know, improving their, their, um, their competitive edge. Um, but also, you know, there's mountains of evidence that supports um, Physical, being physically active, uh, exercising, um, and its effect on our mental wellness, right? So reduction of depression, uh, releasing of stress, improving your mood, self-harming. Um, self, um, um, it, it helps with our social wellness, uh, a, a number of different things, right? Uh, our cognitive health in general, you know, blood flow to the brain. And it's, there's a mountain of evidence that supports supports uh, mental wellness uh, benefits from physical activity as long as the, as well as the physical. Um, from, from a health standpoint, you know, um, we define health as freedom from disease and uh, your, your body's ability to, to do your normal daily activities. So what are those chronic diseases that exercise or physical activity um, at, at adequate levels helps prevent? Well, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, and yes, cancers. It's been shown that exercise and being physically active reduces your risk factors for cancer, all right? Um, and, and a plethora of other um, conditions also. So with that as kind of the backdrop, and again, just a, a real general overview of the benefits of exercise, um, let's start to move towards what I want to talk about tonight. And that actually is, is, is writing yourself or, or, or creating your, your, yourself a prescription for physical activity. So physical inactivity is the problem. And that's what causes or actually is directly associated with several um, uh, chronic conditions. I mean, directly related, a direct correlation. Sure, if you smoke cigarettes, you have a higher risk for heart disease, right? Well, if you're physically inactive, you have a higher risk for heart disease. It's one of it's one of the major coronary risk factors to be physically inactive. All right. So ask yourself this question: Do I get at least thirty minutes of moderate level of intensity physical activity at least three days a week? If the answer is no, guess what? That's a major coronary risk factor. That's like smoking, diabetes, physical inactivity, right? So think of it that way. Physical inactivity is a major coronary risk factor, diabetes risk factor, cancer risk factor, so on and so forth. And, you know, that the, the, the problem, of course, is, is the trickle-down effect on your health and, and, um, and health care and, and so on and so forth. So the solution, you know, is, is, is physical activity. Um, you'll notice I'm using physical activity and exercise interchangeably. And I like to do that because some people, you know, are just turned off by the term exercise. Physical activity throughout the day at a moderate level of intensity, as we're going to find out today, is a healthful thing. And the general guidelines now are 150 minutes per week. If we were live audience, I'd ask this question. How do you know how much is the right amount of physical activity to do? You might go, I mean, Isabel, I, I, you might say, 
Um, I got it. 10,000 steps a day, right? Yes, that's that's one of them. There's So there's a number of different counters. Many of you have Fitbits or, or watches or Apple watches and things like that. And, you know, to keep track of things. Um, but this is the latest guidelines. And it's it's basically it's 150 minutes a week of moderate level of intensity physical activity. All right. Not, not not exactly being on a treadmill in a fitness center, but physical activity at a moderate level of intensity, which is being like out of breath. All right. So physical activity is like a brisk walk. I'm sorry. Moderate intensity is a brisk walk. So if you can look back and say, well, how many times or how many minutes throughout the week was I in a brisk walk or working out or exercising or doing something active like pickleball or gardening or walking to my car or taking the stairs at work that um that caused me to to be um a little winded my heart rate's racing and i feel a little warmer that's that moderate level of activity it all adds up so the goal for you is a minimum of 150 minutes throughout the week that you feel that way right and that's where i want to start the presentation is with this prescription of exercise and what do you do? Oh, so I had the slide today. Um, it's got a, it's got a, a lot of hidden meanings to it, right? Uh, it's first started out as what does your physical activity look like? Is, is, is that it? Um, the fact that I think it's lying on top of a, a toilet um, uh, brings me to my, the the, uh, the graffiti on this on this here is exercise is noxious. I use that in the presentation all the time. I just never had a slide for it. This is perfect. So the fact is this, and you may all be shaking your head, is this most people, this is most people, most people do not like to exercise. They don't like it. It's noxious to them. They don't like to sweat. They don't like the pain. They don't like the time it takes, whatever. Um, and, and so for most people doing the appropriate amount of physical activity that's helpful, um, people don't like. So it's, it's noxious to a lot of people. It's just, it's just the way it is. However, there are a number of people who do prescribe to physical activity and are physically active because they know the benefits and it's helpful. And so what I'd like to do is try to get you through the basics today. So some of it will be kind of like, you know, like textbook basic, but also try to blend in there. Hey, how do I make this work for me? I mean, do I need to go to a fitness center and lift weights? No, I'll tell you right now, you don't. All right. Do I need to join a gym? No. You can do things at home. Uh, you can find things to do to be physically active at a moderate level of intensity, which is key. So sometimes the fitness center helps you achieve that moderate level of intensity. So all right, it's, it's, it may be hard to do that without equipment, but it is possible. All right. So the right direction, I'm sorry, the right attitude, the right direction. And I'm going to try to give you some direction today. All right. So just some general exercise guidelines. Uh, this slide will show up again at the end of the presentation. All right. But I want to kind of set the stage and we're going to dive in and hit each of these points uh, to, to some extent a little bit further. But general guidelines are, hey, you need to be physically active most days of the week. The bare minimum prescription that we give people is three. But you said, Don, wait a minute, 150 minutes a week, three days. How do I do that? Well, um, the duration should be between 30 and 60 minutes. But if you're doing it three days a week, then duration's got to be higher. If you're doing it five days a week, 30 minutes is fine. All right. A little bit of a um, side note here. When we talk about um, how much exercise is enough, um, you should. we're all talking now 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity. And that means it feels like a brisk walk. Like, whew, I feel like I did something. It feels like a challenge is another, is another mnemonic that we use. Um, if the exercise is vigorous, like you're getting out of breath, all right, at your higher level, uh, 75% of your max, so to speak, um, then that counts as two minutes. So, you know, somebody who exercises at a vigorous level of activity, um, they need about 75 minutes of that. So what does that say to you? If you look at those two numbers, 75, if it's vigorous, 150 minutes, that means the more intensity, the lower you have to do. So that's why some of these, you may have heard some of these programs that have become more popular, like these high intensity interval training, right? And why is that popular? Because people get it done in 20 minutes. And it's like, oh, there you go. It saves me time. I just got to work at a high intensity, get my heart rate really high and, 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 and start sweating. And, uh, and, and I can be done in 20 minutes. Yes. So, so the answer to the, the long-term, long-term question is, is, hey, is it better to work out Longer or shorter, or can I work out shorter uh, if I if I increase the intensity? The answer is yes. The benefits are 
are, are similar um, with less exercise time if, 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 if the intensity is higher. Right. So there's a trade off there and the combination of this works, too. So maybe you just do one high intensity activity for 20 minutes a week um, that gives you basically 40 minutes and you need 100, another 110 of moderate. So uh, enough of all the textbook stuff. You, I hope you get the idea that it's 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 an, it's an amount and it's an easy way for for you to categorize. Are you getting enough physical activity? All right. Because I do have people say, well, I work all day. I go to school. I go to work all day. I'm a teacher. I stand all day. I lift things up and move around. Sorry, don't count. The last time I gave the presentation, somebody was very upset with me. She says, oh, Mr. Tomaszewski, I go out to the golf course three days a week and do 18 holes of golf for four hours. How is that? I go, do you walk the course? That's great. She goes, no, I take a golf cart. I go, oh, well, <laughs> that's a problem. So your walk from the cart to the hole? Cool. You know, that, that, that. That, that few yards, that's great. Are you running? Because if you're strolling, that ain't helping either. And she was really bummed out. Like, what are you talking about? I get out four days a week and go to the golf course. Sorry. This, this Hopefully this presentation opens your eyes to that. That, that is not a moderate level of intensity. So it needs to be the appropriate type of activity. All right, we'll talk a little bit about a warm up and a cool down. We're going to talk about resistance training. Um, you don't have to do this every every day of the week or or, or um, as much as cardio. So we're going to break it down to cardio. We're going to break it down to strength. We're going to break it down to stretching. Um, and, and again, this overriding mes message for you is is your effort or your intensity should be a challenge. It shouldn't be easy. You should get done and say, "Yeah, that was a challenge. That was felt like a brisk walk." Right. And then, of course, progression. All of us are going to start based on our physical activity level. So anything you hear today, if you go, wow, I can't do 150 minutes a week. That's OK. Uh, I, I, if you're not physically, depending on your level of fitness, you're right. You may not be able to do that. So the idea is start somewhere, keep track of it. And the cool thing about your body is your body adapts. So adaptation to imposed demands is an exercise principle. Adaptation to imposed demands is an exercise principle that is well documented. So progressive resistance exercise, progressive cardio exercise, um, over time, uh, you'll eventually become more physically fit in order to do things longer and, and meet these goals. So your body adapts. That's that's the beauty of, of physical activity and, and exercise at a moderate level of intensity. It has to be a challenge or your body won't adapt. All right. So just some some things about an exercise program in general, things you may, you may not have thought about. Um, you want to make sure that it's safe for you. The number one reason for people to not exercise is why? Give your answer. I can't hear you. It's not money. It's not demographics. It's not time. It's actually safety. People don't feel safe. They're afraid to get hurt. And uh, that's been shown over and over again in a number of different um, sources that I've looked at, that's the number one reason why people don't exercise. So we do a thing called a PARQ. It's a physical activity readiness questionnaire, and it asks a bunch of questions. Um, for you, um, I, I'd like to say, hey, if you're not going to engage with a healthcare professional like myself or my team at Valley, uh, Valley Health Lifestyles Medical Fitness Center, talk to your physician, and, uh, and they'll, they'll have a few questions for you, too. Typically, your physician will do this uh, this readiness questionnaire and, and, and make sure that, that, you, that it's, it's safe for you. Okay. Uh, the plan we're going to put together for you guys today or, or, or touch on is, is going to be cardio uh, or aerobic exercise. Um, you need to have a strength component. You can't just say, well, I go out for a walk every day. You know, it's like the person who tells me they're on a golf course. That's great. But, you know, how about your strength? How about your flexibility? How about your muscle endurance to go up and down stairs? You, you know, we have to be able to hit all those components. And I think that also turns people off sometimes. It's like, oh my gosh, isn't it just enough to go out for a walk for an hour a day, even if it's at a brisk level? It's good, but it ain't helping your strength. It's not helping your flexibility. It's not a complete program. So think about those things. When we put together a plan, you really ideally want to be able to touch on all these things. And if you have specific goals, you know, for a condition that you're, you're, you're trying to use physical activity to help uh, alleviate, uh, prevent, 
or, or rehabilitate, then um, those specific goals have to be brought into it also. And of course, progression is a, is, is a principle that you'll, you'll keep hearing and seeing. And hopefully uh, you'll, you'll come away with some idea on how to progress here. All right, one last general slide, and that's these are the principles. Some of them I've already referred to, but these are the principles that refer to all types of exercise. So that means cardio or aerobics. That means strength. That means muscle endurance. It means flexibility. These principles apply to all of those types or modes of exercise. All right, so when we say overload, stress the body, yes, that means you need to walk at a brisk pace. Yes, that means when you're on the fitness or on the strength equipment and you're doing um, repetitions or you're using dumbbells, you can't get done and go, oh, I could do like 20 more. It was easy. No, that's not overload. Overload means it's got to be a challenge. When you get done, you got to put it down because you got to put it down. All right. Now, I'm not saying, you know, stressing yourself to a point where it hurts. And, and of course, you need to know your limits and your starting point. So it's going to be different for everybody. But at the end of the day, for you to eventually see improvement in your fitness level or eventually this um, physical activity to be helpful for you, you have to overload. There is no way around it. All right. So it's got to feel like a challenge. It's got to stress the body and your body will adapt. All right. Um, we talk about symmetry and that kind of goes to, um, you know, we got to do aerobics, we got to do strength, we got to do the front, we got to do the back. All right. There's there's a number of things you got to think about. You can't just be a one, a one, uh, one horse, one trick pony, so to speak. All right. I just do sit ups and I walk. OK, you, you, you're covering some of it, but really we have to look at a more uh, symmetrical program. Um, core stabilization is a is a is a is a term that um, is used quite a bit. Um, in, in in physical activity and exercise in in in, in the fitness world, um, but really for for you for mo for all of us, uh, it means it it'll mean something a little different for athletes. It means something you know as far as foundation stability and, and and strength and performance. But for all of us, we really need to make sure that that's a focus also. So it's not just a matter of and it's not just sit ups. You know, there's a number of different cool things like planks. Um, yoga poses, Tai Chi poses, different types of things that really do focus on your core stabilization. So I really like to, to, to add that in there. It, it help, even just holding your posture in a good position helps with core stabilization, right? Um, and then recovery. Uh, this is kind of a complete opposite of overload. You overload, you make it a challenge, and your body adapts. How does it adapt? during the recovery period. So you got to have rest. You got to have a recovery period. And we'll, we'll, we'll bring in some of that, like when do you recover? Um, but recovery and overload, they're like brothers and sisters. You got to have both of them. All right. And then progressions, uh, it's like a cousin. <laughs> you got to have the cousin too. You got to have the progression. The little rule here is this, and this is good for uh, strength. It's also good for aerobics. And that is, 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 do a gradual increase. What does that mean? No more than 10% increase weekly. So whether it be an increase in time, an increase in resistance or pounds, an increase in mileage or distance um, or, or, or minutes uh, that you're exercising, it, you, you want to progress gradually over time. All right. So they're the principles of exercise. And this is what we'll be working on tonight. We're going to do cardio, strength, and, and flexibility using this formula. So we'll the next several slides will be will be using fit for this. So fit is is this is a formula that we use for professional athletes. We use it in physical therapy. Uh, we use it as my background is an athletic trainer, and um, we put together exercise programs for those that are very 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 um, fit and those that are very very unfit, and we use the same formula. Right. So these are variables that we tweak. All right. So again, if you're a brand new exerciser, I'm not going to put you out there for seven days a week. If you're a moderate, you know, you know, uh, uh, well seasoned exerciser and want to do more, then yeah, maybe you'll increase the number of days and how often you exercise. All right. So again, frequency depends on your level of fitness and your starting point. Intensity, how hard you sh I should work. Um, think of it this way. Uh, this will be an easy way to think of things is, you know what 100% effort is, whether it be pushing something, lifting something, running, walking, whatever. 
Um, you'll know what your 100% is. Intensity level is a percentage of that. So maybe you start at a 50% intensity level. Maybe you start, you know, and progress to a 60, 70, 80% intensity level. And always try to stop somewhere reasonable. You can't work at high intensities for too long. So, you know, a moderate level intensity, if I had to define that for you in numbers, it'd be somewhere between 60 to 80% of your max. And if you can sustain that for a period of time, that's the next one is, well, I can sustain that for 20 minutes. Six weeks down the road, I'm sustaining it for 25 minutes. My goal is to do 45 minutes at that level of intensity. So that's the progression. So frequency, intensity, and time are variables that work together and they're specific for your fitness level. All right. Again, it's nice to have someone to help you with this, but um, you know, you can be empowered to do that by just understanding these, these, this simple formula. All right. Type of exercise. We're going to talk a little bit about that and give you some examples also. So let's start with cardio. Um, uh, cardio is synonymous with aerobics. So aerobic exercise or exercise that stimulates and um, utilizes the cardiovascular respiratory system, cardio and your respiratory system, the exercises or physical activity that stresses those systems is what we're talking about, right? So again, it's got a number of different things, but that's the type of stuff we're talking about. We're talking about getting your heart rate up and having yourself and, 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 and knowing, seeing your respiration rate increase. Um, to a moderate level. All right. So we mentioned earlier, how much should I do? Well, you should strive for 30 to 60 minute bouts. If it's a, if it's, if it's a, if it's a formal exercise program, um, 30 to 60 minutes. If you tell me that you can only do 20 minutes on a treadmill without stopping, that's great. All right. And your goal is to move a little bit and, and, and try to have a longer bout because that shows over time that you can do something longer it means your body's adapting. And you're becoming more fit. All right. If you're already fit and you're like, hey, 30 minutes on a treadmill at a brisk pace is easy, then you shoot for something else. All right. So that's why there's a range there. All right. Um, at the lowest level, I tell you what, we 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 try to get people to do something for 10 minutes without stopping. And, that, and that's that's those that are probably the most deconditioned individuals. And you may think you're see your, I don't, uh, you know, ask yourself, you know, can I do something at a sustained level? at a moderate level of intensity for 10 minutes? And if the answer is yes, that's good. And then you, you build on that. You try to get it up to closer to 20, 30 minutes, all right? Then it eventually maybe more. Um, this formula also kind of works into your 150 minutes a week. You know, what, what are you going to do? If you're going to do it five days a week, you don't need to do 60, all right? But the point is, uh, the other point is, is that you can do cardio exercise every day. The rest is really at the 24-hour period in between your exercise. Right. This is a great bullet. Accumulative effects of short bursts or bouts of physical activity. Um, you can accumulate them. So what does that mean? That means if I get up in the morning and take the dog for a walk for 10 minutes, if I run to the bus stop from my car and catch the bus and take the stairs instead of the elevator and get up at lunch and take a 10 minute walk, get home and walk the dog again for 10 minutes, I've accumulated 40 minutes of moderate level of intensity activity. No gym, no membership, no equipment. I'm just walking at a brisk level, at a brisk pace. So it could be accumulative. So people say, well, I, I can't exercise today because I missed, I missed my aerobic class at the, at the gym. BS. No, you can accumulate physical activity at a moderate level of intensity throughout the day. It all counts. That's the good thing. When we're talking about health, we're not talking about becoming a competitive athlete. That's different. But for health, the health benefits. The, the physiological benefits of being physically active or exercising can be uh, um, can be um, uh, realized with accumulative bouts throughout the week and throughout. I'm sorry, throughout the day and then throughout the week. Um, Don, we do have a question. It's saying, um, does the fit program vary by age, um, specifically if you're over seventy? So. Um, it does not. It's it's we would we use the same exact thing um, at our fitness center. Our 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 median age is fifty four. So we have people who are 60, 70, 80 years old. We use the same formula, but the variables are you know it's it's tweaked. So so maybe the frequency isn't 
five days a week. It's two days a week. Maybe the time is not 30 minutes. It's 10 minutes. Maybe the intensity level is still moderate, but for that individual. So in other words, for that 70-year-old who may be deconditioned, moderate level of intensity is specific to them. And I think that's it's a great question. All right. We're not all in the same mode. We're not, we're not all trying to hit the same heart rate. We're not all trying to uh, walk at the same pace. All right. So again, depending on your level of, of fitness, our 70 year old individual who, who's asking the question, it depends on what your hundred percent is. It depends on what, what your fitness level is. So, so yeah, we use the formula, but the, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the prescription itself is, is individualized. All right. And we did talk about the, the you know, continuous activity is really the, the goal and, uh, and, you know, a nice formal bout because I help, I think it fits into our, our routines real well when, when we're able to, to, to organize uh, an exercise program and write a prescription. All right. So let's put that F, let's put the frequency to cardio. All right. We mentioned three to five days a week. It is safe to do it every day. The build in recovery is really, um, it could be within your session, but really the 24 hours is, is plenty of time. For your body to recover and get up and do it again. All right. Ideally, we want to have continuous bouts of 30 to 60 minutes of activity, but again, minimum of 10 minutes of doing something and then taking a break. So taking a break in between and getting 30 minutes, maybe within 60 minutes, you get 30 minutes because you're taking breaks. That's fine. All right. Choose activities you enjoy. I mean, taking the walk, gardening, um, a while for a hike on Sunday with with uh, with my neighbors. I mean, it's it's a it's it's a fun thing to do. It, again, you don't need a fitness center to get your cardiovascular uh, health benefits. All right. Side note: if if the uh, intensity level is higher, if you're doing that high intensity interval training, which means you're doing high intensity and break resting, high intensity and resting, high intensity and resting, that's an interval. Those things may need a little bit more time to uh, to recover from. So you may do that two or three days a week and fill it in with some lower intensity, but still moderate intensity activity. All right, intensity itself, the uh, the I and fit for cardio, uh, we've been hounding on, but this is this is the textbook stuff. Um, Please don't get bored at this. Just, it, I, I think it's helpful for some people to see this, and some of you, some of you may, may may really actually use this. But there is a formula. There is an objective way for me as a professional to tell you and to tell and to monitor your intensity. But all that aside, just remember a brisk walk. What does a brisk walk look like? It looks about 60, 70, 80% of your maximum heart rate. That's what it looks like on an EKG. That's what it looks like on a heart rate monitor. So when you're doing a brisk walk, you know how it feels, right? And that's why I can talk to you and say, hey, that's what a moderate level. And you're like, all right, cool, good. That's easy, right? But if I needed an objective measure of your intensity, I would use your heart rate, right? And we have formulas to figure it out. This is an example of one, right? As we use 220 minus your age, minus your resting heart rate, we multiply by, I don't know, 0.60, add your resting heart rate back in and then that's your target heart rate. So figuring out target heart rate, that's what an exercise professional will do for you. Or just go online and look it up. Okay. Um, things that will dampen your heart rate are beta blockers. All right. So what do we do for those individuals? Because our formula, my formula won't work on them. We look at their heart rate. They're on a treadmill and they start walking. And if it's at 60, we try to get them at 80. So we have a few different tools as professional. But again, for the individual who's doing this on their own, think about a brisk walk, all right? Maybe a question might be, hey, do I need to check my heart rate? Check with your physician. Your physician may say, hey, I want you to exercise, but I want your heart rate not to go over X. So we do have individuals out there with conditions where their, heart, their physician uh, knows what that 60, 70, 80% is and will tell you that number and you stay below it. So again, we we... We, meaning um, our exercise specialists over at the wellness center, we figure these things out for all our members. But again, your physician can do this for you also. And it gives you a guideline if, if you're checking your heart rate. Otherwise, you know, use the brisk walk thing. Okay. All right. Um, so just a, a, a little bit more about intensity. We talked about the brisk walk, but I have a few more tools for you. So again, 
um, my goal is is to get you something practical that you can use. All right. So um, here's another example of moderate level of intensity. You should be able to talk to your partner that you're walking with, but you shouldn't be able to sing. You shouldn't be whistling. Uh, probably laughing would be tough. Laughing will get you out of breath if you're at the right level. You should be able to talk, though. So, for example, this is what it sounds like when I go up to Mr. Smith and say, Mr. Smith, how you doing? If he goes, I'm doing real good. Thanks for asking. Too much. He's working too hard. He should be able to say, I'm doing good. Thank you. That's what it should sound like. So the talk test. You should be able to talk. You shouldn't be able to sing. You shouldn't be able to whistle. All right. You'll feel, start to feel warm. You'll start to breathe a little heavy. If you're breathing heavy and you're a little bit, not out of breath, but breathing a little heavy. Um, uh, if you can't catch your breath, you're doing too much. All right. So tone it down. Slow it down. Bring the intensity down a little. Another way to do it is this. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hard is this activity? 10 is the hardest thing you can imagine. 10 is you have to stop, right? So everybody can use that scale, right? So you start walking or you do stairs or you get on a bike and say, what would 10 feel like? You should be shooting for like a 5 or a 6 or a 7. It should be a challenge. It should be that 50, 60, 70 percent, right? Look at the math. If, if 1 to 10 was 1 to 100, 50, 60, 70 percent. OK, so I hope that was helpful. There's some practical tools on answering that question about uh, how much is it is enough. And that may may not have been. I mean, that's kind of my pet peeve is I see people all the time. I've been doing this for, for almost 30 years now, and, and I have a majority of my members don't exercise at the right intensity. And I'll tell you straight out, they, they don't. And I see it and I tell them, but. I know what happens. You really do need to make it a challenge. It needs to be a challenge. And, and so I hope some of these cues help us um, in putting your program together. All right. The T and fit for cardio is time. How long? We talked about that quite a bit. You want to accumulate 150 minutes a week. You want to try to get at least 10 minute bouts of steady state exercise or physical activity, whatever you're doing. And you can take a break and, the, and it is accumulative. So all good stuff from a time standpoint. A little word on intervals. What does that mean? Maybe you're walking around the block. Every telephone pole is a tenth of a mile. So maybe you're walking at a very brisk pace or jogging for three telephone poles. And then three telephone poles, you just walk. And then three telephone poles, you jog. And then three telephone poles, you walk. That's an interval. What's happening to your heart rate? It's going up, it's coming down. It's going up, it's coming down. So there's these intervals of higher intensity activity within your routine. That's the beauty of interval training is that you can get higher intensity stuff squeezed in a period of time. And it's all cumulative. Eventually what happens is, is you, you, you jog for four telephone poles and walk two. Eventually, you jog for five and walk one. Eventually, you're jogging around the entire block, right? So that's the progression. I hope that that helps understanding what intervals means and how can you utilize interval training in your routine. And then finally, this is fun. It's, 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 it could be a treadmill, bike, rower, stepper. It could be aerobics in, 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 in the pool. It could be a class. It could be Zumba. It could be total body conditioning or whatever. We have a number of classes at the center, and, and there's a number of things you can do. You may have equipment at home you can utilize. You can go out for a walk, just like we said, on a flat surface. You can walk on a hilly surface. Those hills are your intervals. You walk up the hill. You walk down the hill and recover. You walk up the hill, you walk down the hill and recover. You could do something as boring as walking the stairs. I had someone say that to me the other day. And I'm like, all right, yeah, you, you could do that. You could walk down your stairs and back up again. Um, uh, so, so your mode of exercise is anything to get your heart rate up. So whether it's jump rope, whether it's a treadmill at your fitness center, or whether it's a cardio class, anything to get your heart rate up and sustain it for a period of time is what we're talking about. That's the beauty of cardio is you could do a number of things. You could do arms like we have people say, well, I have arthritis in my knees. I can't exercise. Wrong. We have upper body ergometers we use. They're rowing with their arms. They're, they're actually cycling with their arms. We have seated steppers that you sit in and you're pushing with all four limbs. So no, we can, we can figure things out. You know, we get you in a pool and if you have the water up to your chest, you're 75% buoyant, which means your knee pain goes away. And then you get your heart rate up by moving your arms moving your legs and moving your body around in the water against that water resistance. So um, we can get your heart rate up. You can get your heart rate up a number of different ways, right? 
Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to the next piece here, and that's muscular fitness. All right. So two things, muscular strength, muscle endurance. We're not going to spend too much time on separating the two, but they are two to to associate things with muscle fitness. All right. So in general, um, you don't necessarily, so in general, when you're strength training or you're doing muscle, muscle fitness exercises, if it's at a moderate level intensity, in other words, it's a challenge, then you need more rest in between. So we typically say every other day for strength training, every other day. Now, if you're using two pound dumbbells and you can do 30 repetitions, you can do it every day because to me, that's not a challenge. That's just you looking in the mirror and doing 30 repetitions with dumbbells, not doing you much. You need to pick a weight and a resistance, and then we'll get to that. That's a challenge. And if it's truly a challenge, take a day off. All right? So if you're doing it the right way, you'll not want to do it every day. You'll want to do it every other day. Minimum two days a week. All right. Uh, focus on, on major muscle groups. Don't do five different exercises for your bicep. All right? Do major muscle groups. So pushes and pulls, right? So pushes over your head, pulls from over your head down, push out. So think about a push up and a pull up and, and, and crunches, you know, if you're using your body weight. So just use major muscle groups. And a lot of our machines, you know, I give people five, six, seven machines. That's it. We have, you know, I have 30 machines at work. We, we give them about five or six machines, and one of them is a leg press. Why a leg press? Because you work your quads, your hams, your hips, your calves on our leg press machine. So choose these large muscle group exercises. Uh, that's the best way, I think, to do strength training because you can get in and out real quick and, 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 uh, and cover all the bases. All right? Um, balance muscles used to prevent imbalance. So what that basically means is, is, is you need to do both sides. So when you're in the machines, you're typically using both limbs, but if you're using free weight, then you may, need to make sure that you're doing, um, doing it in a balanced fashion, all right? So how many sets, reps and sets? That, that's gonna be on the, on the next slide, right? And, uh, or, on, or, or on one of these slides. So for time, for strength training, we're gonna hit reps and sets. All right, so we talked about two days a week. To minimum, we talked about uh, a break in between. That's your that's your rest. Um, uh, I like this here. If, if you're not strength training, start doing it. And if it's just once a week, that's great. Trust me, your bones will respond to the stress. Your muscles will respond to the stress. I know I didn't make a mistake. I said your bones. Your bones need your muscles to be stressed. If your muscles are not stressed, in other words, they're not pulling against that bone and moving your limb bones are losing mass, all right? So as we get older, as we pass 35, 40 years of age, the pendulum swings the other way and your bone mineral density, some of you may be thinking, oh, I've gotten osteopenia or osteoporosis. How do I strengthen my bones? Strength training strengthens your bones because it pulls and stimulates the bone. So it's important. So strength training is not just for your muscles, it's for your bones. It's to keep your joints healthy. And it's overall, when you work those large muscle groups, it helps support your posture, which takes the pressure off your lower limb joints. So it's really, it's a number of things. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, if you're looking for the newest fad, which really it isn't, it's just kind of a joke, but um, weight loss, phew, strength training, absolutely the number one, number one exercise if you want to lose weight is strength training. Why? Because you're building a muscle that burns more fuel at rest. You increase your resting metabolism when you build muscle. When you work at a moderate level of intensity with strength training, that 48 hours of recovery, your body's burning calories. Much better than walking a treadmill for 20 minutes. Get into a strength training routine. Get, in, get into a cycle of strength training activities. Um, and getting, get into a cycle of strength training activities to get your heart rate up. Then you can do, you get your cardio and your strength all built into one. So really, really important stuff. All right. What happens is I'll, I'll address this is, is people go, I guess they go, oh, I'm not doing strength training. I, I don't, I don't want to build big muscles. Pfft, has nothing to do with it. It's stressing and challenging the muscles you do have and they will adapt and become stronger. All right. Okay, uh, intensity level. Um, this is this is back to the eye. So we talked about heart rate. We talked about a brisk walk with cardio. So how do we measure intensity with muscles fitness with strength training? We measure it in pounds, right? So the guys 
lifting a dumbbell, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 50 pounds. All right. So how do we know what's the right level to use? Well, technically speaking, what I would do for you is estimate your maximum or your 100%. And then I would prescribe a, a level of, of exercise. So for example, if I can lift 100 pounds over my head, I might start you with 50 pounds. That's 50% to 60% eventually to 70% and probably stop there and just keep doing that as a maintenance program. Although you become stronger, so that 100 pounds maximum now becomes 110 pounds in six weeks. So it's a moving target, but that's a technical way to do it, all right? Let me give you the cheat sheet. If you can do 10 reps of a given resistance and no more, if you can do 10 and then you have to stop, that is equivalent to 70% of your max. So you don't have to do a one RM or one max test. You don't have to know what your 100% is. I'm telling you today, you can predict it, all right, just based on doing a 10 rep activity. So let me give it to you in a different way. I get on the leg press and I push uh, 60 pounds and I can do it nine times and then uh, 10 times, I'm done. I can't do any more. Perfect. That's the level of intensity you want to be at. That's 10 repetitions. That's about 70%. It's equivalent to about 70% of an effort level. That's what you want to feel. All right. Do most people do this? Absolutely not. I have people I've given a three set of 10 uh, prescription to, and six months later, I come by and go, how you doing? And they're like, great, I'm doing 30. Uh, you, wait a minute, you're doing 30 without stopping? Dad, that stinks. That's not good. Because you need to find a weight that you can do 10 times and not more. So I say like between 8 to 12. So if you could do it 10, 11, 12 times, that's cool. That's a good intensity. If you could do it 30 times, it's too light. You're just out for a stroll. It's not helping you. Sorry. All right. Muscular fitness, time. We don't use minutes in time when we express time for, for, for fit for muscular fitness. We use reps and sets. So reps and sets are time, right? Because you do 10 reps and do three sets. That's, you know, um, that takes time. But we express time when we write the prescription using reps and sets. So how many reps, how many sets? We talked about 10 because it's easy for everybody to, to remember. And it's about 70% of your max. But, you know, I, I like the idea of somewhere between 8 to 12 because it's never the same. Any given week, you're, 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 you're not going to feel as good as you did or, or different. So if you can do eight to 12 reps of a given given um, resistance on a given machine, that's great. All right. Once you get to a weight that you can do more reps with, you're actually building muscle endurance. This is a side note. This is a whole nother class that we're not going to get into too much. But understand that that's what's happening. So I was being a little facetious when I said the guy who's doing 30 reps isn't doing nothing. He's working on his muscle endurance. That's, that may be that may be a goal. And again, that's why I think, again, you, you need to sit down and go back to our original slide and say, what, what, how do I set this program up? Look at, look at making sure you have a well-rounded program. And what are your goals? So maybe your goals is, I don't want to build strength. I want to build muscle endurance. And so again, that prescription would be lower resistance, higher reps, all right? And then, of course, for the strength, you can see that as we lower the reps below 10, it really starts to build strength, but then your intensity levels go up. And again, as a new exerciser, um, I'd be more comfortable with you starting at about that 70% or 10 reps effort, that intensity level I like. Get there eventually, all right? Okay, uh, oh, rest in between sets. Yeah, 30 to 60 seconds, not five minutes. All right, the ATP in your muscles, after they're completely um, exhausted, rebuilds itself in less than a minute, in less than a minute. It rebuilds to about 85, 90% in less than a minute. So that means your second set, it's going to be a little harder, but you can do it. All right. So again, and then your second set of 10, you maybe just squeeze nine out or, or 10 out. And it's very hard to take a 30 to it, second to a 60 second break and then, and then do, an, do a third set. All right. Doing a fourth set, a fifth set, a sixth set. No, actually, there's another principle that we didn't talk about. And that's the principle of um, of uh, diminishing returns. So doing two sets is better than one. Doing three is better than two. But doing four isn't that much better than three. And doing five is definitely not much better than three. So you start to diminish your returns as you get to those higher number of sets. All right. So. Um, 
Bottom line, three sets of 10. If you're a new exerciser and you're saying, Don, you're confusing me, think three sets of 10. And the 10 means I can't do any more. If you can do three sets of 10, but I could do 20, then you got to choose a new weight. And that's the intensity piece, right? I got to make sure the intensity is at a level that it's a challenge. The 70% goes with the 10. The intensity goes with the time and the reps, right? Everybody good? I hope everybody's good with that. In other words, if the weight's higher, your reps will be lower. If your reps are really high, it means your weight's low, which means your intensity's low. So you really got to find that right, that right happy medium there. The type of strength training, we can use machines, but you don't have to. You need to find something that challenges your muscles, something that after 10 repetitions or 12 repetitions of it, you got to stop. And they're fatigued and you need to rest. And then you do another set of those 10, 12 repetitions, right? Whether it's dumbbells, whether it's ankle weights, whether it's machines, which I like because you know what? Um, it, it works large, major muscle groups versus small muscle groups. Um, you can use your body weight. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about a bench press and pushing weight over your head, that's a push up. If you think about doing an overhead pull down like this guy's doing in the picture, that's like a pull up. Dips, squats, doing planks, all right? Just laying on your floor uh, with all four uh, limbs in contact. So on your hands, on your toes, and your body as straight as it can be, and it starts shaking, try to do a plank for 30 seconds to a minute. You'll, you'll, you'll feel your muscles. All right. And yeah, we can use TheraBand. We can use those types of things, all right? Again, things you could do at home, things you could do from a chair, right? But again, not just doing it. This has to be a challenge. If this is not a challenge for you, then you need to, do, you need to find more resistance. We have different types of bands. Yellow, green, blue, black's the, th you know, the thickest. So, um, you know, we actually, there's different types of tensions in different bands. So number of different things you can do. All right, this is the last piece, folks. I know we're, we're flying, I'm saying a lot, and hopefully we got some questions. But we did cardio, we did muscle fitness. Now we're going to do flexibility. I have the fit formula all squeezed into one slide here. Not that we don't focus on flexibility. It's part of part of your uh, well-rounded exercise routine. But I, I think, you know, it's, it's, there's not much else to be said about it. You know, you can do this every single day. Um, ideally, you, you want to make stretching, if it's a goal to improve your flexibility, then you, you want to do it more often. But at the very least, maybe you can, uh, maybe you can incorporate flexibility exercises, stretching exercises, in the days that you work out. So maybe before you go for your walk or your run or your hike, you're stretching your lower body. So yes, you can, you can fit that into that routine there. It can be part of your warm up. So that's why the frequency is, is kind of variable here. At least two to three days a week, sure, you can do it every day. The intensity of a stretch, wow, how do I do that? I can't use my heart rate for stretching. I can't measure resistance by, by, by you know, how much weight am I using? So how do I... Check intensity. Well, this one's a cheat. This one's like you just you do it until you feel uh, a little bit of uncomfortableness and then you back off and hold it. Right. So you stretch until you feel the tightness, stretch until you feel uh, a little bit of discomfort and back off a bit and then hold it. And that's when T kicks in the time. How long do I hold it, Don? At least 10 to 30 seconds. Right. Actually, I should probably say 20 to 30 seconds, but even 10 seconds. Think about it. All right. Most people don't even stretch for 10 seconds. They hold the stretch. One, two, three, four, boom, move on to the next 10 seconds, like one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three. So it's, you got to hold it for a good, good period of time. All right. How many reps do I do? Do two or three of each stretch, depending on how many stretches you do, depending on what your focus and your goal is. If you really want to improve your hamstring and low back flexibility, then maybe you'll do five or six of these with a longer hold period. All right. Um, and, and again, specific flexibility exercises for your upper body, for your lower body. Um, you can find those. There's plenty of resources uh, to do that. We actually have a little stretching machine at work where there's like, you know, 180 different types of stretching poses that, that help you figure it out. But most people can figure it out. All right. Calf stretch, quad stretch, shoulder stretch, using a wall, you know, as, as, as a stretching mechanism. All right. But when we do stretch, we want to make sure that we don't bounce. All right, so the type of stretching is static. All right, so think about this. Somebody leaning over and touching their toes. One, two, three, four, and up. 
one, two, three, four, and up, bouncing. That's a no. Every time you bounce, your muscle tightens up. Every time you bounce, you invoke what we call the stretch reflex. Every time you bounce, the muscle you're trying to stretch contracts. It's a natural reaction, the stretch reflex. Do not bounce. Find a static position and hold it. That's a true stretch. Bouncing is not the type of stretch. Will you see it being done by athletes? Yes. Whole nother ball game, whole nother lecture. All right. Bouncing or, or ballistic stretching has a use. And particularly with, with competitive athletes just before competition. But for me and you, for general fitness, it's a slow static hold. So we do have a question, Don. What about dynamic stretching or warming up before static stretching? Okay, good, 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 good. So the warm-up could in, usually includes a light cardio component and stretching. So your stretching could be in, in your warm-up. Um, I like stretching, you know, people say, you think about a rubber band that's cold or warm. So maybe stretching at the end of your workout, all right, is a place to fit it in. As far as dynamic stretching is concerned, absolutely. For those who don't know what that is, that's really incorporating movement or dynamics, all right, so movement in the stretch. So, for example, I wish I could show you walk across the stage, but um, if you were to, if you were to uh, take a large step in place, like you're walking, and then you squat down, all right, and hold that position, and then take another step slowly and hold that. You can imagine your quad, your knee is bent, those muscles are stretched, your foot's on the ground, but your heel's coming up. You're stretching your calves. So that's a dynamic stretch. So absolutely. Um, learning some of those dynamic stretches. Um, uh, it's a good, efficient way to do things, too, because, you know, you could you could do a dynamic stretch by walking in an exaggerated pattern. for the first part of your walk to really kind of get a stretch in. All right. So cool. Great, great question. There's a number of different things out there that we're not touching on. And Dynamic stretching is, is a good question, and it's it's absolutely do that. That's incorporating movement into your flexibility routine, but not bouncing. Slow, methodical movement. Okay, I promised you that slide was going to be back, and it's here. So this is kind of as a recap. All right, how often should we have a general exercise routine? You know, at least three days a week. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to it, and uh, but you could exercise every day. Just yeah, it depends on your level of intensity. Depends on what you're doing. Depends on what you can afford to do. Maybe too busy to do that. And I understand that. So you really have to design an exercise routine or a physical activity routine that fits in your lifestyle. If it doesn't fit in your lifestyle, you ain't going to do it. You're not going to do it very long at all. All right. You'll start off and then you'll stop. So you really need to make it something that you can sustain over time. Right? You've given your body enough time to adapt and reach those and reap those health benefits. The intensity should be like a brisk walk for cardio. The intensity for strength training should be a challenge. You should get done and go, oh, man, I can't do anymore. All right? I did 10, 11, 12 reps. That's, that's as many as I can do. That's the resistance you want to use. All right? The duration, we talked about that quite a bit. You want to try to accumulate over time, over the week, accumulate at least 150 minutes of moderate level of intensity. If you're doing vigorous, it, it's, it's, it's more effective, more efficient rather. Warm up and cool down. We didn't talk too much about cool down, but warm up really is, 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 a, is, a, is a short um, bout of some type of aerobic activity, whether it be jumping jacks, whether it be running in place or walking briskly fast and then stopping and stretching. That's, a, that's, that's the definition of a warm up. Cool down is kind of the opposite. If you're walking fast, slow down and walk slow, then sit down and stretch. Resistance training, at least two days a week. We need that time in between, right? Um, stretching can be done every day. We just talked about a few different ways to build it into your routine, make it part of your warm up, your cool down, so on and so forth. Uh, effort on all this stuff should be a challenge. Uh, we want to make sure that, that that it's a challenge. And I think that's the noxious part for a lot of people is they just don't like the way it feels. And then progress. Be patient and progress. And don't worry about catching up to somebody. And, 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 and I tell you what, for some of the older folks that are out there, and this includes myself, if a year from now, after doing a regular exercise routine, I go, oh, my gosh, I'm not any stronger and I haven't lost any weight but I haven't lost any strength and I haven't gained any weight, then I say you're hitting your goals, all right? Because it's, you know, 
we get to a certain age where it's an uphill battle, literally an uphill battle. And I have people who've been exercising with us for years and they look the same. Oh my God, is that good? Yeah, it's good. No, they don't, they don't look like competitive athletes, but they don't look any different. In other words, age hasn't caught up to them. They're beating age. They're two, three, four years down the road exercising and they weigh the same. No, they didn't lose weight, but you know what? They haven't gained weight. And they're still doing the activities of daily living and, and enjoying life. And, and that's really part of the goal. It's not about weight loss. It's not about, it's about controlling chronic diseases and being able to do the things you want to do and being able to go to the store and do your basic daily activities. So yeah, you got you got to work out to, to live. And that's, that's, that's what it's about. So I hope this was helpful. Um, this is some, there's kind of a checklist uh, uh, outside of, of this and, and this like, you know, making sure that you're, you're safe, making sure you, you pay attention to the elements that are out there. Um, uh, heat and humidity, I want to touch on quickly because when it's hot and it's humid, uh, I'm sorry, when it's humid, period, it stretches your body out tremendously. The primary way for your body to cool itself is sweat, sweat evaporation. So sweat evaporation is the number one way for your body to naturally cool itself. When it's humid out, your sweat doesn't evaporate. Your body does not get cold and you, you risk heat stroke and heat, um, uh, heat exhaustion. Some of the most well-conditioned athletes in the world um, suffer from heat exhaustion because they're doing too much in a hot human environment. All right. And it is, it's a 100% preventable uh, condition, but it's also a life threatening condition. So please keep in mind the humidity uh, when, when you're, when you're looking at the conditions and, and your exercise outside, if you're inside, Hey, good. All that's controlled for you. Think about the wind chill factor and, um, and things like that and how that, uh, that affects you. All right. Know your routine. Um, we, we basically, you know, gave you the formula for a prescription. That's why it's an RX there. So, um, so uh, hopefully that was helpful for you. And I can make these slides available or we have handouts that, that summarize this stuff. And of course you got the internet. So this stuff's all out there. All right. And then, um, you know, we didn't talk too much about rehydrating, refueling and recovering and things like that, but that's all part of it. All right. Your body burns carbohydrates. You need to eat them. All right. People who don't eat carbohydrates, I, I don't know how you exercise. It's just, it, your body does your body burns carbohydrates. Do you need to eat a pound of pasta or the biggest bagel in the market? No. All right. So again, this isn't a nutrition lecture, but the carbohydrates are what your body burns when the exercise. That's what your body is built to burn. And that's why when you look at the food pyramid, it's the biggest part of the food pyramid. All right. But I know carbohydrates get a bad rap. And they probably get a bad rap because A, people eat too much, and B, they don't exercise. So yeah, carbohydrates give a bad rap. You, you need them. So you need to be able to recover, refuel, and, and make sure you're hydrated. All right. Um, I, I want to spend just one more minute kind of running through these two slides. I just want, because people are probably thinking, hey, well, all right, I may want to join a fitness facility. I may, I, 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 I like the idea of, of being supervised to some extent and having, having someone answer questions if I need it. These are the things you look for when you're looking at a fitness facility. Uh, this is a picture of the inside of our fitness floor. You can see the machines are spaced apart. We didn't do that for COVID. That's the way it's always been. We make sure that the place is never going to be overcrowded. We're going to make sure that um, oh, our staff can get to you. Uh, we have staff on the floor all the time. They have at least a four-year degree. You don't have to pay for their expertise. They're there to help you. And um, we have a gymnasium, we have group exercise, we have a track, we have some free weights upstairs. Um, this is one view of the track, but the backside of the track is nice. It's all windows looking outside. And of course we have a pool. We have a six lane lap swimming pool. We have a leisure pool where you can go in and do exercises in warm water. We have a whirlpool and we have a therapy pool where you need a prescription for. So a lot going on in that, in that building. Um, this is where we're at. We're at MacArthur Boulevard. Um, it's Valley's Health and Wellness Center. And there's a number of clinical services within the center. We have physical therapy. We have full suite of diagnostic imaging. We have a full retail pharmacy in there. Um, Isabel's department is there, community health. Um, that's there on the second floor with a conference center. So a lot going on, but we do have a, 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 a large medical fitness center that I, that I just talked about. Um, and um, reach out and uh, we'd be happy to 
be happy to follow up with you and, and help you. If there's uh, any more resources that you want to find, you can find them at exercisesmedicine.org or the acsm.org. Right. All right. Thank you so much, Don. That was a great um, informative presentation. We really appreciate that. You're welcome.